Thank you for staying with us. You're still on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And now it's time for our hot topic. Well, this one is NRC yet to recover from government's previous transport fare slash. And when we're talking about the NRC, we're talking about the Nigerian Railway Corporation. Now, as we all know, the federal government has said that they're slashing about 50% of bus fares for travelers in this Utah season. And as well as the railway, then obviously they have zero prices on this one. But... However, we're hearing that even from the last administration, the previous one that we've seen, the NRC has not been able to recover from it so far. We have here someone who's going to help us just give an overview of everything, how it has been fair, how they've been faring so far, and where we are now, and if this is even the right initiative um, at this moment. So, good morning, Ted. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Um, I, your name, okay, sorry, I'm going to take your name right now. <laughs> We're with Comrade Francis Igbokwe. He's the Secretary General, the Nigerian Union of Railway Workers. Good morning, Mr. Francis. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so my first question right now is, how was it in the last time? Um, you guys have had this before. And here we are again, the Nigerian government is saying um, zero prices for travelers in this Yuletide season from yesterday to the 4th of January. But I want to know how it happened the last time and what the effect was on your corporation. Well, thank you very much. Um, the last time, that was during the Buhari government, the most uh, immediate past president. Um, he gave suggestions, sent uh, directives to NRC. And of course, um, NRC is really owned by the government. And when such directives come, they have not shown that to comply. They did that, but the, 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 you know, it's like your father or your parents sending you to an era or mm. for an obligation. At the end of the day, they have to, they are supposed to cushion the effect of giving out these services for free. Uh, we use fuel, we use other rolling stocks, we assault some people in the, in the system. So this was supposed to be cushioned by some, you know, um, effort from the government so that the company or the corporation will not feel it so much. That didn't happen till now. Mm. And we are into another uh, form of gesture from the government, which must be complied to. But the point is that the government should take responsibility, the consequences of giving something free. How do, do how, how are they supposed to do that? Fuel or diesel is the biggest problem in the corporation. So if the government can say, okay, every fuel, all fuel you are going to use from now, to the next two, three months, we're going to give you free. That, 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 would be, that would be most appreciative because, you know, the cost of fuel, diesel, everything is gone up. So last time, the effect is not, you know, is still there. And we are into it again. But they have to comply because this is a government-owned parasteta. So we are not saying no to what the, 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 the instruction of the government. But what we are saying is that government should remember that a lot has gone out of us, mm -hmm. out of the system. Therefore, they have to do something. Even if they don't want to do it through fuel, that can be, you know, budgetary, uh, uh, sub uh, budgetary allocation. To mm -hmm. say, okay, since you, you are buying this, you are doing this, use this to cushion the effect. So that is just the... Are you so, saying there was no budgetary uh, provisions for this at all? I'm not saying there's no budgetary provisions. Well, so what I'm saying is that a budget has been made there's a bigger responsibility that was not budgeted into. So in order to cushion the effect, you have to do a bigger, another... So there was nothing given to your corporation to say, okay, because you're slashing the prices or because people are going to travel for free, um, so you get this. Are you saying that there was no money allocated to you for this oh, purpose? Oh, it was not enough. For now, for now. Um, you no, know we're, we're still on the last one yeah. before yes. we even get to this one. At that time... There was, uh, there was none. And the, the corporation is suffering it you now. Wow. Of course, you know, it's a very big corporation. So whatever you do affects the corporation. And moreover, it is a corporation that has been abandoned for a very long time. Yeah. Mm. It's just trying to start just trying again. to start off again. And at the point of trying to you know push the security problem came on board. Mm. You know? So it's like the retrogression coming back to square one. But because you have men and women who knows their owners in terms of, in fact, men you can call away themselves. They know what to do and they started all afresh. 
So it is not that we will obey. But coming to give us this type of responsibility again without something to, as a buffer, it will not go But so, were you also expected to remit to maybe the Federation? Of we normally remit to the no, Do you have a target that you you are expected to remit to the Federation account every month or every quarter? I think you, the issue of target comes in if all the all the all the parameters are you know covered or settled. Mm. Now we don't have we don't have enough um, trains. We are not all over the country. Mm. Uh, what I mean that is not an integrated yeah. train system. Train system, there right? There are places where you get train. There are places that there are people that will die in Nigeria without seeing train or even using train. Mm. For example, the route from let's say Lagos, Bini, Asaba. Over it, Aba, Onicha. Those routes, they don't know. They only they are used to luxurious bus. Yes. Uh, so, um, all is not. Uh, we are trying our best. All is not well. Like why I ask the question is the fact that okay, if for instance they are expecting you to give a hundred million every month, maybe the government will not give you money, but they will say for this two three months do not re we are not expecting you, you to, to remit 100 right. million maybe give us 50 million something like that no, that's, that, what, that's what, what i'm saying there are so many ways to cushion the effect yes do you understand and none of them was made the, the, the last time i don't think but for this one um we had you know i think two days ago the announcement was i think on 21st and then um they said they are going to they are, they are meeting with the transport uh, the minister and so we expect that within the Within the period of theater day, between the government and the minister, of course, the same government, uh, maybe something like that will have. You know, uh, this scares me, you, you know, because when the minister, the minister was talking, Dele Alake was talking, he said all the relevant stakeholders have been met, mm -hmm. including even the NURTW, which is not um, uh, really directly connected to the, to the government. That's private sector as it is. So who are these relevant stakeholders that were met if NRC was not brought to the table and told this is what you're going to get because we are, you, we are expecting you to slash the prices and all that. Are you telling me that that information and that discussion was not had before the announcement was made? The, 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 you know, the announcement just came. Yes. It so it was like a proclamation so then? It, it, yes, and so for us. But of course, you know now, within the, within the, within the, within the government, and then the management, probably they, they will have met, okay. or they are talking to them through the minister. Do you understand? But mm -hmm. on the side of the union, we, we they are not we, we are in the known of. We just had the announcement, and don't forget, they said the fourth of mm -hmm. fourth yeah. fourth of January. This gesture will be over. Uh, yes. Over. So it's not even something that is enduring. It's not sustainable. I was going to yeah. ask that. Do you think, in fact, before we get to it being sustainable? First, the initiative. Do you think it's a very good initiative for Nigerians right now? Especially with, we've seen in the National Daily saying um, there's low turnout for this because there's no money, there's no cash. So are people even able to access this initiative that the government has put in place just to, you know, give them as a buffer palliative um, for the whole cash crunch, the fuel um, hike, and all of that that we're experiencing right now? Well, normally in Africa, if anybody does anything to you, then the next thing is to say thank you. Right. Uh, so in our usual way, we appreciate the government. But for me, like you have just said, there's no money. If I want to travel to my village now for Christmas, I have a family of about six. Of course, traveling is not there. Mm -hmm. If I want to travel, I have my mother in the village, I have uncles, I have these. I have, actually, I'm not going to go to village as I have... Uh, uh, uncle, so I, I come to see. I say, look, I don't need to now. No, no, no. So there are no money in the pocket of Nigeria, especially mm. workers. Particularly if you work as a railway worker, because they are the least paid people in the system. Go and do your verification. So you, even the gesture from the report, people are not. It's not. It's not a rush. People are not rushing yes. to do that because you must have some money in the pocket before following a free ride right. to wherever you are going to. If it's not when you get to village, uh, there is some time now. At least there should be hot water <laughs> to give the, at least the old men and women in the village. Uh, give them milo, give them bovita. But you can't afford that now because there's no money. The palliative the government said they are giving people, they stopped. They just paid September and they did no more. Do you understand? So uh, there's no money anywhere. So no matter how free, 
something is, as long as it has to move from one place to the other. And of course, this period is a period that people go to village. Some people not go to village from January except this December. Right. Eh? And if if you go to if you go to village in December, people are not most people are not going for fun fair. There are projects to be embarked upon. There is there are one program or the other that enables you to or that will you know uh, require you to require bring you to, to bring out money from bring your pocket. Bring out from your pocket. And uh, if it's not there, you have to sit back. Because you cannot tell somebody there in Lagos or in Abuja or Potako for uh, 12 calendar months making a year, coming to December, you came and then you'll be okay. smiling with people. <laughs> so the best is for you to avoid traveling, mm. to avoid all those shame. So there are no money in the pocket of people. So even the gesture, fine, is okay, but it's a temporary something. I would have expected the government to say, okay, for now it's 300. That okay. will make a very we tremendous actually, impact. We actually even said it on the program this okay. morning. Now, uh, as we're wrapping up, because uh, we're out of time, let me just have you respond to this, because we have the opportunity, a rare opportunity, to have you in the studio now. There's this talk about railway workers being... Um, doing what they call racketeering, mm. you know, you get there, uh, you're selling tickets, you're finding, in short, racketeering, let me call it that. So how will you respond to this, let me use the word, agbero in the railway system? Well, um, you should also remember that the ticketing something um, was and is still a source to a company. Mm. Do you understand? It is not railway that is directly handling the ticketing something. So if uh, if if railway is handling it, we can talk authoritatively. But it is a different uh, body that you know is doing that. So and uh, of course uh, they say in every twelve there must be a Judas. Mm -hmm. You don't rule out any any anything within the system, particularly where people are hungry. We are not justifying that, but. Um, the companies handling this ticketing thing should be in the best position to say what they are doing and why, how they are doing it. If it's direct railway, we can be authoritative. You right. can go into town and say, Listen. but again, I want to also use this opportunity to, this has brought the importance of railway to the full and the workers. A worker, a driver of a train goes with about 20, 18 coaches yes. with human beings you know, material luggages and all the rest. Mm -hmm. And if you, they tell you how much is paid, you 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 be marvel having such responsibility. So we are on the average, how much, how much, how much are you paid? My sister, I, if I say it here, maybe this accounts will go the first. No, but we like so, to know because so, but, people but need we are this using this to call on the government to do something. The president, the former president, approved ninety five percent salary um, enhancement. For railway workers, up to now it has not been a. Uh, so give us a range, maybe from this amount to this amount. Let's just have an idea, because we need this information if we are going to speak to are the you government. Paid, are you paid uh, minimum wage at least? We are paid minimum wage, but the group railway workers are the least in their in their salary structure, and it was done. Uh, I think during the military time, they they undermine the importance of railway. They undermine the importance of all the professionals that are railway assembled. They undermine the, the, the informal sector that railway also, you know, enhance. They undermine the development and every other thing railway, you know, symbolizes. Okay. And then place them on the lowest salary structure, which is, which is, which is, which is crime against humanity. Okay. So we are calling on government to do something because we, a driver in railway is equivalent to a pilot in the air. Okay. Because they carry the same amount of uh, the railway, they carry, carry, more. They carry more. They carry more. Okay, well, well, we'd like to thank you. There are some questions we'll ask you behind camera anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so that we can be able to fight this cause. But yes. this is where we have to drop it, Mr. Igbokoi. Thank you so much for coming on the program this morning. Thank, thank you, you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, we've been talking with Comrade Francis Igbokwe, Secretary General of the Nigeria Union of Railway Workers. We'll take a short break, and when we return, it'll be time for our second hot topic. Stay with us.